Hello world and welcome to the program. This is Alex and the new episode of Ukrainian Unleashed, a podcast where you'll get along with Ukrainians and also observe how the global scenery impacts Ukrainian society in these exciting times. We speak about events, trends, individuals and lifestyles of modern Ukrainians. So let's jump right in! In this episode, I'll share with you the current situation with the protection of animal rights in Ukraine, because it seems that such topics get lost in today's vigorous life. However, it is our indifference that often becomes the reason why animals all over Ukraine are tortured and exploited for entertainment as a commodity. This is especially true now in the summer tourist season, because the thirst for the exotic entertainment often leads the owners of these places to poachers. So let's find out which animals suffer the most and how they fall into the wrong hands. Is this a problematic topic for Ukraine and neighboring European countries? Let's go! Hello, hello! Alex is on air, recording the episode from sunny Odessa. The weather today is about 30 degrees, so no way I won't go straight to the sea to polish my suntan. Well, I hope you too spend a good time somewhere on vacation, and if you are at work, let this day be full of positivity and inspiration for you. Last weekend I visited the Mykolaiv Zoo with my family and friends, which is currently the largest one in Ukraine. In 2015 the zoo's collection contained about 5500 animals from 500 species. Last time I was there with a class when I was a child, so I forgot almost everything, but this time my mother really wanted to go there. This is why it was hard to deny it. So two hours and a half on the way and we arrived in Mykolaiv. I need to say that little changed since the last time I've been there. The zoo turned out to be very spacious and the animals were quite tidy. In fact, I'm not a big fan of any animal attractions. I avoid dolphinariums and never take pictures with animals on the streets. Fortunately, this has become much less in Odessa. Hopefully in your city too. But basically, I decided to visit the zoo to see at least in what conditions the animals are now kept. So even though the animals were quite friendly, the cages themselves still caused me disappointment. The zoo is in dire need of modernization and much of the 18 hectares it occupies now are simply not being used for their intended purpose. Old metal cages also do not allow animals to be seen and I think prevent them from feeling less cramped. Instead, the newly built safari corner really looked quite modern. But again, there was not enough space for giraffes and elephants as it could have been provided. So the trip itself made me think about the status of animals in our society, their needs and the protection of their rights when most people almost neglect them. Are wild animals sufficiently protected in Ukraine today and where are we moving now? Of course, the topic is very prominent and it should be noted that the protection of the rights of wild and domestic animals are not the same issues. These two big problems have different supporters in Ukraine, because when it comes to bullying of cats and dogs, many activists react vigorously to such cases. And this topic requires a separate analysis, of course, so I think I'll come back to its discussion later. I will only note that, myself, I all the time react emotionally to the facts of any abuse of animals. Our family, for example, having a private house keeps two cats and two dogs that are of a random breed. We love them all very much and took them home straight from the street. But what about the situation with wild animals, which often become objects for entertainment or collecting? To find out more, I turned to Irina Chirkina, a journalist, eco-activist and employee of the Caritas Odessa Charity Foundation, who has been monitoring this topic for a long time. Irina recently published several articles in which she tracked the current situation with illegal wildlife trafficking through Ukraine and the activities of non-governmental organizations in this area. 
I just couldn't pass through her analytical materials, so with her approval, I'm using them for recording this episode. But besides, from my side, I will share a few important updates to make you feel on top. It is no secret that the nature of Ukraine is quite rich due to two landscape zones that cover our country. The forests in the west and north and the steppes in the east and south. And because of it, many species of animals are constantly at risk of falling into hands of poachers or wildlife traders. Due to the destruction of Ukrainian fauna, many species are already listed in the Red Book of Ukraine, which as of April 2019 contained 542 animal species. Quarantine has forced almost the entire population of the planet to stay at home for several months, to limit traveling, meetings, offline communication. But many people violated the recommendations just to have a walk in the park or to visit their loved ones. But there is someone who is forced to live in isolation against their will all their lives. These are animals that were purchased for entertainment to circuses or delphinariums, private businesses or home collections. So no surprise, Ukrainian activists have more and more reasons to protect animals, opposing its cruel training, inhumane conditions or even killings. Indeed, marches in cities and towns or small but systematic rallies, joining the animal rights movement by famous artists, negotiations with deputies and officials, happen to have an impact in general. All this forced the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports of Ukraine to announce its intention to ban the use of animals in circuses by 2021. The bill will ban the use of animals in all entertainment shows, private circuses and public places. Currently, there are 317 animals involved in circus shows in seven state circuses in Ukraine. 96 of them are state-owned. The rest of the animals are used in circus shows under agreements with no governmental organizations who own these animals. In January this year, the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports of Ukraine signed a memorandum of cooperation with the NGO Feldman Eco Park, based in Odessa, so that animals from state circuses could live in eco shelters and eco parks. The memorandum provides an opportunity for private circuses to join in the framework of this document. But the state has neither the rights nor the intention to interfere in the decisions made by the owners of private zoos regarding their inhabitants. The uncontrolled process of replenishment of animals in zoos and private collections is also a concern as some animals were previously illegally imported to Ukraine. Poachers often kill families of children to abduct cubs and then sell such animals to private zoos, circuses or private households. In circuses, the animals is often forced to live in a tiny cage without the ability to move freely to communicate with the relatives. Animals suffer from cruel treatment and training, which involves starvation and use of torture. After such a life, animals often lose their minds. They have disturbed sleep, depression, animals lose their sight. They even continue to live in an imaginary tiny cage after being released. When volunteers rescue such animals and bring them to rehab centers, the pack cannot accept them due to the physical and mental disorders. Therefore, even when they are free, they are left alone. In 2017, I visited a bear rehab center near Sinevir Lake in the Carpathian Mountains, where bears who have been tortured and ill-treated were provided with not only medical but also psychological assistance. It was painful for me to see how many of them could not control their reflexes and get rid of fear even after being released. 
That is why animal rights activists are forced to continue organizing protests in Ukraine. Thus, before the quarantine restrictions, every weekend in Odessa, some activists gathered under the state circus or under the Dolphinarium building to protest against inappropriate conditions of treating the animals. Typically, such events bring together about 50 participants. They always have information posters and try to explain the consequences of financial support of torture. Ukrainian activists are mostly young people, they have jobs, hobbies, and are ready to join the campaign for humane treatment of animals. Animal rights activists successfully balance work and activism. Besides, they always remember the purpose of this struggle, as for example one of the defenders of animal rights, called Vesta. Vesta joined animal protection campaigns almost three years ago. Then the first march for animal rights took place in Odessa. Previously, she did not think about the life of imprisoned animals in circuses, dolphinariums, exhibitions, but after the participation in Echo Action, began to read, learn and act a lot. She says that during the last three years, several bills have been passed in Ukraine on restrictions on mobile and stationary circuses, but the organizers of the show always ignored them and broke the law. So in the end, she says, as long as it's lucrative for officials and business owners, the struggle will continue. For more and more people could hear about the problem, Animal rights activists have to constantly turn to visitors of circuses, dolphinariums, their business owners and the state authorities. Sure thing, there are too many problems in Ukraine for people to think about animals. Many people could say that. But I agree, low wages are not a reason for bullying or encouraging animal torturing. Another problem is that people often have to search for relevant information on their own. There are no social ads or public lectures on this topic. Vesta says that the media often come to the rallies, but there are still no social videos about animal rights violations on TV channels or well-known radio stations. If the situation with circuses is more or less clear, then what about the domestication of wild species? Now many people buy caracals, foxes, wolves to their private estates and raccoons and lemurs start living in their apartments. Irina Chirkina in her article named Commodities Animals for Sale decided to find out who and in which way sells and buys exotic animals in Ukraine and, most importantly, under what conditions they are kept. The market for exotic and wild animals in Ukraine turned out to be really impressive. Lion cubs cost from 1000 US dollars, lemurs about 2000 US dollars, and bear cubs, fox cubs, wolves and rare birds are constantly sold. The offers are designed for any wallet and still satisfy any whim. It is enough to search in Google, the desired animal will be brought even to your home, regardless of where you live. So let's imagine, we are looking for an exotic gift for the head of the company. This request Irina addressed to about 50 different proposals she found online. The first was a raccoon nursery in Poltava. The owner did not tell her name, but she talked a lot about her business. In autumn 2019, she kept about 50 animals. According to her, females bring between 4 and 6 cubs each season. They sell babies for 350 US dollars. Raccoons are usually bought for various businesses, cafes, restaurants, contact zoos, or in private very often to offices. 
Animals are usually transferred, for example, to Odessa by bus or train. Along with the raccoons, the owner promised to hand over the necessary veterinary documents. Other sellers immediately replied and they did not have any documents and offered to pick up the animals themselves. This is how the owner of a former black and brown fox farm in the Odessa region works. On a side note, these beautiful animals are also kept and killed for making fur coats. Some vendors resell animals that are no longer able to entertain guests in clubs or at shows. According to one AD, Irina was offered to buy a lion for 1,500 US dollars or a leopard for 7,000 US dollars or exchange an animal for their bear. Bears is a family of carnivorous mammals that are common in the northern and partly thousand hemispheres of the planet. There is one representative in Ukraine as well. The brown bear Ursus arctos, Europe's largest land predator, is now listed in the Red Book of Ukraine as an endangered species. Marina Shkvira, a candidate of biological sciences and a consultant at the Bila Skelia and Domazhir Bear Shelters, says that in the wild nature of Ukraine, their group of researchers identified about 230 bears during 2009-2013. But the number of bears is not increasing now. In a long perspective, the trend in Ukraine of course goes down. According to Marina, in private farms in Ukraine there are, for example, about 200 bears and even lions, up to 1000 wolves and wolf-dog hybrids. That is almost as much as in the wild population. The appropriateness of the conditions these animals are kept under is an acute issue. Usually, if you do not take into account large zoos, these animals can be found in baiting stations or circuses. Local species like birds, foxes, wolves, bears are also bought for the photo business. When an animal becomes useless or dangerous, so it is to be resold or given to recreation centers, private parks and collections for the entertainment of visitors. Besides, new animals, usually from the Russian Federation, are smuggled into Ukraine every year. For example, from Russia, where bear hunting is common during hibernation, many orphan bears are transported through Kharkiv and other Ukrainian cities. Many bears from Central Asia and Ukraine itself also enter the Arab countries. Birds and primates through the port of Odessa to our domestic market or further on to Europe where there are many wealthy customer collectors. Exotic parrots or small animals such as lemurs and crocodiles are positioned as consumables. These species are quite expensive and they live in incompetent hands very little time. They need very specific conditions and diet. Besides, there are very few specialists in Ukraine for exotic animals who would provide professional advice to species that are not typical for our country. However, all these facts are not confirmed by Ukrainian customs. When asked about the identified cases of illegal import of animals to Ukraine, for example in the Odessa region, journalist Irina Chirkina was told that in 2015 18 and 19, only one such case was recorded. The main directorate of the National Police in the Odessa region also mentions only a few cases for the period 2018-2019. But animal rights activists question such information. According to them, Ukraine is a transit country for such businesses its borders are regularly crossed without any documents and proper conditions by many unique species. So such cases are simply not recorded by government agencies.
Recently, Kyiv City Council deputies decided to limit photo and video services involving animals. From now on, the Ukrainian National Police must pay close attention to the animal abuse. According to Article 89 of the Code of Ukraine on Administrative Offenses, violators will face the following fines in case of breaking the law. From 120 to 180 US dollars for any cruel episodes with the animals and from 180 to 250 US dollars and imprisonment for 15 days with confiscation of the animal if animal rights were violated repeatedly. Unfortunately, as a side effect, children who see animals under such circumstances get used to them as to the object but not to a living being. Would this positively affect them? I'm not sure about that. Namely, visiting the places where animals are used for entertainment or buying exotic animals is in fact sponsoring poaching and killing. Local Ukrainian charitable foundations also support animal rights. Thus, charitable foundation Caritas Odessa has prepared several videos about the cruel exploitation of animals in the fashion industry, circuses, dolphinariums and tourism industries to raise the public awareness. Short social ads very easily explain what are the real living conditions of animals that have had the misfortune to get to people's hands. It is always necessary to explain that cruelty is unacceptable because it is vital to show people what the struggle is for and why it is so important. Quite often it is a long process. At the beginning the participants sow the seeds of doubt, then they consolidate knowledge, and then it can happen that the person who lately attended the show now is standing on the side of animal rights activists. Therefore, the most effective measures are still mass rallies, widespread and relevant information, patience and a lack of aggression, of course. In the countries of the European Union, for example, a campaign for animal rights protection was launched long ago. It began with a prohibition of usage of exotic species and then deepened with the all-inclusive ban. For example, in Austria, Bulgaria, the Netherlands and many other European Union countries, these restrictions are implemented on national and local levels. So when one of the circuses in Hungary was closing, the animals were sold to nearby countries where such shows were still possible. So this is how an elephant came to the Odessa circus. Given modern humane trends, many circus bands decide not to use animals in their shows. Often these are experimental new circuses, or the traditional ones are beginning to use modern technologies, like the circus in Germany did when it used holographic images of animals in its shows. After all, in the last 10 years in Germany, 20 elephants have died prematurely due to participation in entertainment programs. According to the staff of the British circus Big Kid Circus, viewers now appreciate more humane shows. But there are still circuses in the UK that use pets. In Finland, there is a nationwide ban on the use of only certain species of wild animals, but in modern circuses there are few performances with animals. In general, representatives of circuses in different countries recognize that removing animals from their shows is a long way. Ukrainian environmental activist and protester in Europe, Danilo Samborski, says that, for example, in the European Union there is already a concept of proper treatment of animals, to which society is trying to adapt, saying, yes, we should be on top, this is where we are going. To my mind, we all want to live in a modern European country, where every life has value, where people do not abuse animals and cruelty is unacceptable, don't we? So let's not screw it up.
This was a new episode of Ukrainian Unleashed podcast. Thanks for being here with me. I also would love to thank Purple Planet for lovely musical compositions used in this episode. We did our best to extend our presence all over the web, so you may find us everywhere, wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, check our pages in social media with fresh updates. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram accounts are waiting for you. See you very soon, guys.